Number two, another form of higher question. Again, it's a geometrical one. The standard form of, you have one circle, you have its equation from that, you can extract its geometrical information, centre and radius, and then from there, just by the simple geometry of the distances and so in the diagram, you can work out the centre and radius of the other circle and then reconstruct its equation. It's exactly the same, it's almost the same this time. So what have we got? First part, find the centre of the circle at B, this point here. We'll extract the information from this, that's in the very handy form of a simple translation of a circle from the origin by 2 along and 2 up, you know its centre's at 2, 2. I'll just call that the point A there. So A is at 2, 2, and I know its radius is 4. Sorry, the square root of 4. And its radius is 2. That's the first part there. And then it's just a case of examining the geometry here of distances to see how to get from A to B. And the first thing notice is, if the circle sits inside the square, then the side of the square must be the same as the diameter of the circle. So I've got a simple translation that will take me from A to B. How do I get from A to B? I would go along a certain amount and up a certain amount. A certain amount along and a certain amount up. There's a translation that will take me from A to B. And I know the dimensions of that translation, because I know the radius. I know the radius is 2. So that distance must be the whole distance 4, and that must be another 2. Same up the way, that's the radius 2, and that circle fits inside the same square, so that's 2. Which means I can do this for the, the coordinates of B. Sorry, It's going to be, I start at 2, 2 along, and I go another 8, so 2 plus 8 along. I start at 2 up, and I go another 2, and 2 is 4 up. Which means B is the point, 10, 6 because I was using the translation, and I'll put a note of this at the side though, to justify the work in here, I'm using the translation, the move from A to B is 8 along, 6 up. Now there is a piece of notation for that that you can use, which is this vector 8, 6, or you could write it in words, 8 along, 6 up. So you've got 8 along, 6 up, from 2, 2, it takes you to 10, 6. Now that was the first bit, that was easy enough, and even easier is the next bit. So what's the equation of the circle at B? Well, if I know it's centre, and I do, and it's the same radius, so for B, I know this. I know the centre is 10, 6. I know the radius is still 2, so reconstructing the equation in the simple squared form, because that's what you get directly, it'll be x minus the x-coordinate, y minus the y-coordinate squared equals the radius squared. Then you can either leave it like that, equals to 4, which is sufficient in the exam, or you could multiply out, which I'll do just for the practice of it. I'd be tempted just to leave it like this, only with that saying 4, because that matches the form the original one was given in. But if you wanted that multiplied out, then it's just a case of multiply the brackets. Squaring a bracket, that's trivial. Square the first, twice the product. Square the last. Square the first, twice the product. Square the last. And then just take that 4 over. The 4 bringing that over, equal to 0 putting it into the standard form of the squared terms first, x squared plus y squared, minus 20x, minus 12y, and then I've got 36 take away 4 is 32, 132, equals 0. doesn't take long to get from one form to the other. In that direction of multiplying it out. There, that's question 2.